All right, hey, this is Mr. Barr, and I'm going to do an IXL that deals with trigono trigonometric ratios. Find a side length. So here are the basic uh, three trigon trigonometric functions, right? The sine of x, which is the angle, equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. Cosine of x equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent of x equals opposite over adjacent. So when I'm looking at this problem right here, what do I have? I'm looking for, let's keep those right there for me. I'm looking for WX, WX. I'm looking for this. So this is what I'm looking for right here. So I actually, I'm looking for the opposite side. So I'm gonna use the one that has the opposite. I'm gonna get, and I have the hypotenuse. So I'm gonna use the sine function, so sine of 24 equals the opposite side, which is the unknown that I'm looking for, over the hypotenuse, which is 10. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply both sides by 10, so this is gonna be 10 sine of 24. 10 sine 24, which is 4.07, rounding to the, oh, rounding to the 10th, 4.1. Okay, this one, what do I have? I have the hypotenuse, and I'm looking for x, y. I'm looking for the adjacent side, right? I'm looking for the adjacent, so I'm gonna go with cosine. Cosine of 25 equals adjacent, which is what I'm looking for, over the hypotenuse, which I have. So I'm going to go 7 cosine of 25. Uh, 6.3. Cool. See, this one's going to be another, what would I use, like sine? Well, let's see. Let's do one more like this. Do, do, do. I am looking for EF. I'm looking for EF, which is the opposite side. So I'm going to go with the sine. Sine of 42 equals the opposite side, which is what I'm looking for, over the hypotenuse, which is 9. So 9 sine of 42. 9 sine 42. Uh, 6.0 or just 6. Is it going to accept it as just a 6? It did. Good. Okay, let's jump a level. See what happens. All right, so now it doesn't give me I have hypotenuse anymore. Now it's giving me a side. So we're going to be using the tangent function. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. I'm looking for an adjacent angle or side. So I'm going to go tangent of 34 equals the opposite, which is 2, over the adjacent. Ugh. You know what? I'm not. I can do this, except what it's actually going to be. So if I multiply both sides by the adjacent side, And then I divide both sides by tangent of 34. So now I have adjacent equals 2 divided by tan 34. So I had to do a little bit of manipulation, and that occurred because my unknown was in the denominator down here. But it's going to be 2 divided by tan 34, which gives me 2.96 which with the rounding is going to round it to a 3. I guess the other way you could think of this is, so this one tangent would be opposite over adjacent. That's actually going to be really clean. So tangent of 56 equals the opposite 
right? That's what I'm looking for over the adjacent of two. So this is just gonna be two tan 56. And then we'll jump a level. That's gonna be, oh, it's a, a three again, isn't it? Sorry, 3.6, 2 tan 56, what, what did I, 2 tan 56, opposite over adjacent, ah, it was looking for the hypotenuse, I wasn't looking for adjacent, I was looking for the hypotenuse, oh, uh, bar, well, I messed that one up, I'm still jumping a level. You guys with me on what happened? It was asking for AC, it was asking for the hypotenuse, and I found BA. Not good bar. Okay, jumping a level. Is there anything weird here? What am I, let's identify what I'm looking for. I'm looking for AC. I'm looking for AC. I'm looking for the opposite side. What do I have? I have the hypotenuse. So I'm going to go sine of 35 equals the opposite, which is what I'm looking for over the hypotenuse of 7. So 7 sine 35. Uh, 4. Okay, I'm going to jump a level because that's what am I looking for? A, B, I'm looking for, this is just a tangent function. Opposite, you know, okay, this, this is a good example. I'll show you what I'm thinking of. So I'm trying to find A, B, so I'm trying to find the adjacent side. And I know that I'm gonna use tangent on this. <laughs> Tangent of 40 equals opposite over adjacent. And remember, in that previous one, this led into a whole bunch of math that I didn't want to do. So watch this. If I know that the angles of a triangle add up to 180, I know that this is 50, right? So if I do tangent of 50, and now I'm actually finding the opposite over the adjacent, opposite, over the adjacent of five. So this is five tan 50. So five tangent of 50, which is, it's gonna round to a six. Or I could do, ready, if I went with the top one, it would have been five divided by tangent of 40, which is also the six. So two different ways of thinking of it. Correct answer is a six no matter what though. Jump in a level, see if anything crazy happens if we jump a level. It goes decimal on me, big deal. Rounded to the nearest tenth, jumping a level again. Yeah, okay, square roots, let's do it. Not a big deal. Find IJ, find IJ. Okay, I'm looking for the hypotenuse. Looking for the hypotenuse, and I have, let's go with opposite over hypotenuse. Ooh, it's gonna lead into that weird math that I don't like. No, I'm looking for the hypotenuse. I've gotta use the hypotenuse. Okay, here we go. Let's go with sine opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of 58 equals opposite, which is the square root of 57, over the hypotenuse. And I don't know if you picked up, I'd, I'm going to multiply both sides by the hypotenuse. I'm going to divide both sides by sine of 58. It's going to give me hypotenuse equals square root of 57 divided by sine of 58. Okay, I can do that on calculator. Square root of 57 divided by sine of 58.
8.9. 8.9, does that seem reasonable? It does seem reasonable. 8.9. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Same idea, just with a square root again.